Several Notre Dame players and the two new coaches, Gino Gaduli and Joe Rudolph, met with the media on Wednesday night. Now, as you're watching, this is probably Thursday or Friday, uh, but we did want to bring you the updates from the press conference. Tyler Horker was in the building uh, talking to these players and coaches. Of course, before we dive into it, please do go ahead and hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, of course, if you have not done so yet. And you can head over to blueandgold.com for all the stories, the written coverage from all of the availability i think it was like 10 or 11 uh guys you you, you were able to speak to tyler so we're going to go through some of these topics i, I want to think the first one that was pretty interesting to me is uh, one of your tweets that you had put out from gino gaduli uh, his quote tyler buckner isn't going to take a back seat to anybody you added that gaduli says he fully expects buckner to compete with sam hartman for the starting quarterback job something tyler that you would expect him to say but still mm -hmm. He said it. It's interesting. Let's talk about it. Yeah, for sure. And we'll get to Sam Hartman specifically in a little bit. But it was kind of interesting to hear Sam Hartman kind of reiterate that same quote. He said he's actually known Tyler Buckner for a little bit. I want to dig more into that. We got him for probably 15 minutes today and didn't really have time to explore where that stems from. But Hartman kind of said the same thing. He said, look, this dude's really good. And if I wasn't here, he would be starting. So uh, and Hartman is here, and maybe Buckner will even be starting again. That's five months down the road. We'll see where everything's at in fall camp. But right now, I think just the entire team has a lot of confidence in Tyler Buckner because we'll get to these guys in a minute as well. But I was talking to some of those freshman wide receivers, and I couldn't ask them a question about Sam Hartman without them saying, hey, Tyler Buckner is a pretty good quarterback too. So I think Gino Gadulli, yeah, he's saying what – you would expect him to say probably what he should say but I also think there's some truth to that in that they, everybody in this uh, program this Notre Dame football program believes that Tyler Buckner is a really good quarterback he's an MVP of the Gator Bowl that's that's the game that he's coming off of and that's what everyone kind of has in their mind take the good from that game and Tyler Buckner is a really good quarterback I think Gino Gadulli, he's been here officially for for what like a week or, or, or less than a week whatever it is I think he's kind of been looking at Tyler Buckner for a little bit longer than that and everything that he's seen both in film and in person he likes it a lot so for folks wondering hey is Hartman gonna want to leave because Reese came here the, that's not the case I'm curious Tyler did he touch on you know Reese leaving and, and Gino coming in yeah he absolutely did and he had a lot to say about it but at the end of his answer he was just kind of like hey it is what it is um Everything that a Notre Dame fan would would want him to say, would hope him to say in response to that, and, and those things would be, hey, I didn't commit to Notre Dame or signed with Notre Dame for this coach. I signed for Notre Dame. That's exactly what he said. He said, I mean, it, it was almost poetic in a way. Sam Hartman was like, hey, you see that Golden Dome out there? You see Touchdown Jesus, the stadium that we're 100 yards away from right now while we were sitting in the indoor facility? He said, all of these things are the reason I came. And then he mentioned Marcus Freeman as well. He said, I came to Notre Dame for the top down. Yes, Tommy Reese was a part of that for a little while, for the first month that he was here, or, or really a few weeks only officially once he got onto campus. But it was never going to be a, hey, Tommy Reese left, I'm going to leave. And look, as much as he talked highly of Marcus Freeman, everyone talks highly of Marcus Freeman. I don't know if, if Marcus Freeman walked out that door for whatever reason tomorrow. I don't think Sam Hartman would follow him. I think he wants to spend his final college football season at Notre Dame, and he's really happy here. You, you could really sense that from him and, and when we talk to him. I'm expecting you guys are going to talk to Sam Hartman a ton over the next several months, you know, during his little one-year rental period um, at Notre Dame. We were talking before we started recording the juxtaposition a little bit between, you know, a bunch of these freshmen who I will say, I mean, they're, they're pretty well spoken. Uh, but Hartman being what, 24 years old, six year in college football, talk, done a lot of interviews. I even covered him as a recruit, you know, back in what, what was he, 2018 recruiting class or 2017, uh, way back in the day. What, what, what just what do you think about his aura? Like what what kind of dude did he feel like? Look, Drew Pine had a little bit of that. But it wasn't the same. I think Drew Pine's just a very charismatic guy. Sam Hartman is charismatic on top of being an experienced dude. I mean, he started 45 games at this level. Drew Pine just started the first 10 of those. So every time we talk to Drew Pine, you got a little bit of a sense that 
hey, he's mature. He knows what he's talking about. We talked to Sam Hartman tonight, and I was like, whoa, th this guy's from a different stratosphere. And you have to understand that most of the guys, even if they're 18 years old, we talked to some true freshmen tonight, and, th and they were very well put together, very well spoken. You could tell that they're cut from a different cloth than at some of these other programs across the country, most other programs across the country. But Sam Hartman was still on a different level. It was it was crazy. It was like you were talking to the 35 year old businessman at a party and he's got all the answers for everything. And, you know, when you watch a movie and you're like, it cuts to that scene where everyone's at the party and they're like, man, I need to talk to that guy because that guy has all the answers. Sam Hartman was that in the room today. Everyone was huddled up around him. You could ask him anything about. Uh, the, the one question that he didn't have an answer for actually was that was asked by our very own Patrick Ingle at blueandgold.com. It was a very good. I didn't even know Patrick was armed with this question. He said, you've thrown 110 touchdown passes in your career. Do you know to how many different targets that has been? And Sam Hartman was like, I, I have no idea. It's 18, if you're wondering. But then even the way that Sam Hartman handled that, this was the last question of the entire press conference. He goes, I hope to uh, – and he knocks on wood right on the table that he was sitting. He's like, I hope to increase that number a little bit this year. I think he's going to. If he stays healthy, that number will go up by uh, at least a half a dozen, you'd have to imagine. And then uh, with the two coaches, Gino Gadulli, quarterback's coach, Joe Rudolph, offensive line coach, just curious about your you know, th thoughts on those two, you know, what, what we should expect from them moving forward just in terms of their personality in those press conferences. Yeah, Gadulli, wise – beyond his years, I would say it, it's kind of every time I, I look at this guy and I hear him speak, I have to go back to Wikipedia and be like, are, are you sure this guy's only 39 years old? He talks like he's been around the game for uh, a lot of years, like, like at least a decade beyond that. And then you look at Joe Rudolph, who is literally almost one decade older than him. I think he's 50 years old, two guys that you can tell know what they're doing. They, they have a vision for what they're doing. I think, the track record for Joe Rudolph speaks to that, what he did at Wisconsin, both in recruiting, developing guys, putting them in the NFL. He talked a lot about that. Uh, he talked about leaving a place after one year and, and why he would do that when just a year ago he was talking about building Virginia Tech and wanting to do the same thing at Virginia Tech that he did at Wisconsin. He was asked, again, I'm sensing a theme here, Patrick Engel, pretty good at asking questions, asked him, why would you leave that when, when that's what you wanted to do? And he said, well, quite frankly, I think I could do everything that I wanted to do at Virginia Tech at Notre Dame and do it even a little bit better. So it, it was a career move for him. He's 50 years old. He's at the pinnacle of offense. If you're an offensive line coach, this is where you want to be, as Kerry he stands. So he's excited about the guys that he gets to work with, and he thinks that he can do a lot of things. And then Gadouli is the same thing. Why wouldn't you be excited about working with Sam Hartman? And then that, that quote that you showed about – Tyler Buckner, if that's what he truly believes, if you have a guy like Hartman who's in his sixth season and has showed all of these things that he can do on a college football field, and then you also have a guy like Tyler Buckner, why would you not want to walk into a situation like that? So I think it's, to answer your question, two guys who are really excited about their circumstances, but also two guys who have shown at multiple different places that they can do a really good job at what they do. One more quick item, Tyler. Notre Dame signed one of its best receiver classes on paper in quite some time. Rico Flores, Jaden Greathouse, and Braylon James, all three of them early enrollees. Quickly, your impressions of those guys, what they had to say? I spent most of my time with Braylon James. I didn't know he's a he's a songwriter, he's a singer. Apparently, he's got a SoundCloud. You probably know more about that than I do. on Spotify yesterday, actually. It's pretty good. There you go. So he, he's spending his free time doing some of those things, but he also said, man, the grind of Notre Dame has fully hit him, classes, whatnot. But I just think all of those guys, they walked in the room and you were like, are, are you sure these are three true freshmen? Because they, they've got some good size on them. Braylon James said he's up to 195 pounds. So I'd expect him to probably be playing at 200, maybe 200 plus. Uh, he's, he's working at the boundary wide receiver. So he's learning from Deion Colsey, Caleb Smith, he said it's been awesome to come in with Caleb Smith, the Virginia Tech transfer, who we also talked to tonight, who was wise beyond his years as well. You have a true freshman and a guy at Virginia Tech who played three or four seasons, both working to try to get in reps with Deion Colsey at the boundary wide receiver. I think that was a really cool dynamic. But again, you, you have three guys at the wide receiver position who we talked to tonight, who just by the looks at them of them and the way that they sounded, I think you could see a lot of them on the field this season. It's all up to how Chancey Stuckey develops them, 
what kind of falls on into their lap in terms of playing time and at their various positions. But like you said, Mike, just an incredible haul at the wide receiver position. And I was very impressed by those guys tonight. Should say Notre Dame signed four receivers, uh, Caleb Smith, Coincidentally, you know, uh, same name, not related to the Virginia Tech transfer. Uh, Smith will arrive at Notre Dame um, in over the summer. And then Flores, Great House, and James did get there in January. All right, folks, really appreciate you watching this video. Please do hit the thumbs up on it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. And then, yeah, go around our YouTube page. We had videos with Minchi, Hartman, and uh, Gadouli and Rudolph all posted on our YouTube page, the uh, the allotted three minutes that Notre Dame allows us to post from those pressers. So please do go check that out. Again, th hit the thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, head to blueandgold.com. And as always, we'll catch you guys next time.